So one day we will see your name on the big screen with director Greta Gerwig. That's the plan. That's I the hope, plan. yeah, I hope so. Uh, I have to say, a, fil a film by Greta Gerwig, yeah. yeah. And I'm bad like the Barbie. Over the weekend, we moved into a Barbie world. Bad like Barbie bandwagon shows no sign of slowing down. When you actually look at how these things unfold. Hi, Barbie! Hi, Ken! A movie about a doll conquers the North American box office. I think it maybe looks like a straight line from the outside. Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie. Over a billion dollars at the global box office. It also makes the film's director, Greta Gerwig. Have an Greta. Greta Gerwig. Greta Gerwig. Congratulations in advance on all the awards. The first woman to reach the milestone as a solo director. But and when you're in it, it feels just like a mess. Largest opening ever. Highest grossing female director of all time. All part of the vision for Oscar-nominated director Greta Gerwig. You sort of have to take the leap and hope that there's a parachute attached. The idea of a coming-of-age story is something that happens again and again and again. I was actually on the subway in New York and I heard two teenage girls talking. One of them said to the other one, I wish I could live through something. I wish I could live through something. Part of my experience of learning how to direct was being on film sets as an actor. For lack of a better term, the mumblecore movement was kind of born here. What does mumblecore mean? A little bit, a bit about Mumblecore and how you became like... The queen of the empire. Yeah. <laughs> Making a film called Hannah Takes the Stairs. And uh, I co-wrote that and I acted in it. That's the best is that nobody like really actually listens to each other. Mumblecore was said as a joke by one of the sound mixers. I'd like to... Nights and weekends is, um, it's kind of hard to synopsize. I'm trying to say something. Every time that it's not perfect, I fix it! He said that the actors mumble. I just don't want my mumble. And it's hard to sound mix it. It was probably me doing some of the camera work, or at least the boom work, when I wasn't in it. It was an incredible place to learn about filmmaking. The New York Times is responsible for printing it, yeah. I think, the first time. I think it's also weird as an actor in these kinds of movies, because people pretty much assume that you are the character. Well, my name's Ken. Oh, hi, I'm Greta. Greta, Greta. nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Greta Gerwig is awful. That's not me. It's not a documentary. I have to take off my goggles because I'm gonna say something important. It's very surreal to have people watch it because um, I think it, it feels like part of us. I really l was able to make kind of messy, wonderful learning art. I'm writing and acting it at the same time. What are you doing? I'm trying to hold you. It seemed to respond to some lack of reality in films. That's not how we live our lives. <gasps> this is how we live our lives. Come on! That's not how we have sex or talk to each other. This is how we do it. You have this kind of great early rush with yeah. the sort of mumble call movement. Yeah. And then there was a point where it was almost like the, the mainstream was kind yeah. of eating you up. Was that a good feeling? Was that where you thought you wanted your career to go at that point or not? I eventually started getting paid for acting. I remember when I read the script for Greenberg, which I auditioned for, I thought, that's I'm it. singing this Saturday. This sort of, like, question, I think, in people's minds, because those movies were so scrappy that there was a feeling of, does she know what she's doing? You're gonna let me in. Getting it was huge, and it was a huge, you know, turning point. But then, actually, after I did that film, it, it was a year before anyone saw it, and then I came back to New York and I couldn't get another job. Even though I, they knew I'd been in it, they'd say things like, did you get to meet Ben Stiller? And I was like, no, I was, I'm, in, I'm in, really in it. <laughs> and I, I got a day job again during that time because I didn't have money. Then it premiered at Berlin, and then um, I was in L.A., and then I auditioned for the Ivan Reitman movie, No Strings Attached. The lovely Greta Gerwig, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to have you on the show. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you here. Oh. But now we see you on magazine covers, red carpets, <laughs> the whole deal. You sound the cusp of stardom. You're in a movie that uh, opens Friday, and who is the cast in this? How do you feel about that kind of buzz? How are you dealing with fame? <laughs> It's like a crime scene in my pants. This is with uh, Ashton Kutcher and Natalie Portman. Yes. 
and to be called, you know, like the, the next big thing. Well, I was meant to do a sitcom called How I Met Your Dad. Attention, people of New York, my name is Sally. That's me. And whatever happened to How I Met Your Dad? Who announced something very exciting. We found a bullhorn. <laughs> Who wants tequila shots? Yeah. And it didn't work. Nobody wanted it. So that, that seemed bad, but now it's okay. Um, but who knows, it could have been great and I would have had a better alternate life. One critic asked if Gerwig was now the greatest actress alive. <laughs> Worked with Noah before, but yeah. this is your first time writing with him. Are you still writing? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'd still like to uh, make that like part of who I am. And I think when I read Noah's movie Greenberg, I had this kind of instant flash of like, I didn't write that, but I wish I had. It was after Greenberg, and um, he asked me if I would be interested in writing something with him. Probably the first seat of Francis Ha was in 2009. Noah is such a wonderful writer. When I was writing Francis, I wanted to entertain him. I had been writing for a long time, and I, I had all of these little scenes. It felt like a combination of like really building something together, but also sort of showing off for each other. <laughs> and I gave it to him, and I said, what about all this stuff? And he said, I think there's a movie in here. Well There's this very beautiful montage where your character returns to Sacramento. I loved growing up in Sacramento. You also included your own family in the film. I felt like I could use my real hometown and my parents without feeling like it was exploitative. So it's not like a place I left behind. I could ask them to be part of the film. I'm moved every time I see that section because I do love where I'm from. These new cutting boards? Bye, I love you. I wanted to make a movie, a home movie that took place there. Do you think I look like I'm from Sacramento? You are from Sacramento. I had started writing Lady Bird but I didn't know what it was gonna be yet. Thank you for driving. You're welcome. I was writing it for a number of years and I felt it sort of bubbling up inside. You're not coming. You can't walk up to the gates anymore. I think it's a good piece of writing. I could give it to someone else to direct. I know a lot of directors and they would do a good job. Yeah, but I'm going to college. Well, Dad will walk you to security. But it, it felt very much like it. If you don't do this now, I don't think you're going to do it. So do you want to do it now or, or not? Ladies and gents, this is your pilot speaking. I hope you're having a pleasant journey with us so far. We're being treated to some truly spectacular sights this morning. Really looks like stock footage, huh? I get to see these sights every day. But for the rest of you, Storyblocks' stock library offers unlimited downloads of high-quality footage, templates, music, and more without any of the turbulence. The dense clouds of legal jargon are intimidating. Copyright law seems complicated, and confusing licensing regulations leave you in danger. But Storyblocks keeps you 100% legally covered with clear-cut licensing. To get started with their curated and commissioned library of over a million assets, subscribe at storyblocks.com slash Dodford. Sure comes cheaper than three years of flight school. With your upbringing, yeah. your experiences in Sacramento, mm -hmm. what got you out to New York? I was always dreaming about the big city. There were jobs around film and around theater, but I had day jobs until I was 26. I just don't know what I'm doing with my life. Up until 27, everyone says, you're so young, you've got so much time. And then all of a sudden you're 27 and everyone's like, well. 27 is old though. You should probably figure this out. This idea of it's the first time in your life when you're not young. I, I always felt like my connection was to theater mainly because I could tell that it was made by people. And, and it seems like that might be something I would, I would be able to do. I was sort of willing to do anything. It wasn't so much like, oh, I have a sense of like, it's gotta be acting or it's gotta be writing or it's gotta be directing. 
It was like, what's necessary? How, how do I get in there and do anything? I was doing anything I could do. So I was, I was doing a lot of technical theater. The luckiest thing that happened to me was that I found a group of people who were really making their own stuff and that they took what they did very seriously. Um, like uh, Josh and Benny Safdie, uh, Rai Russo Young, Ty West. All these people were there. In particularly early films I made, I wrote them and held the camera and did everything because there was nobody to do anything because we had no money. And it was that community and the feedback and support that we gave each other. That, that, was, that was actually worth more than even anyone hiring me. So it was, it was my beginning of what became, what was my film school. And so, um, Theater ended up being a door that felt closed to me, but movies felt kind of like the Wild West and like you could do anything. And if you have a voice, you're only going to find it by leaning into the things that maybe feel not right. Even going back to Lady Bird, I thought, well, I'll write this and then I'll give it to someone else to direct. I've always wanted to direct and I never felt ready. I'd been thinking, like, I really want to direct, but I'm, you know... Courage takes a while to grow. But there's always a point when I'm writing a script when I think mm, this is sort of embarrassing for, because I feel very exposed by it. I think these, these kinds of smaller movies only work when there's a director you know, with this clear vision. Weird to be in director mode with you guys. And then I thought, it's time to jump, kid. Even if this goes completely sideways, I think I will have rather had thrown my hat in the ring. I don't know how much of it has to do with being a woman. When I had a script and I was talking to different financiers, I mean, everyone said no. I was not a person you, you hire to do anything. You're like, is it because I'm a first-time director? Is it because I'm a woman? Is it because it's a story? You know, is it because just indie films are a risky proposition? But I don't know why. I just, I just was like, someone will make, <laughs> someone will make this. My name's Lady Bird. It's weird you shake hands. Yeah. I think you don't quite know until you're on the other end of something like that, that you can do it. I want you to be the very best version of yourself that you can be. You sort of have to take the leap and hope that there's a parachute attached. What if this is the best version? The best compliment I ever got was uh, someone said, you are so delighted when you are looking at the monitor at actors' work. and." Um, they said it makes me want to come back and do a good job. Still don't know how to use those rollers that you gave me. Oh, <laughs> directing is the place that I feel most myself and I can only ever do it as myself. Collapse like a little closer. I want to create an environment where it's like, try a big crazy thing. No. Go left, go left. It's after they heat up, you. And Lukey, come over to her. Come collapse. Oh. <laughs> And kiss her. I have every crew member wear uh, name tags, um, including myself. You better kiss her. You're more than your position. You know, you're a person. Twist the hair like this. And <laughs> <laughs> so Hollywood came to the capital city tonight. The movie is called Lady Bird, and it's the first film directed by Greta Gerwig. This movie is really a love letter to Sacramento and to be able to have my family and friends and everyone I grew up with here, it's just, it's really beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations in advance on all the awards. You deserve it, and if you don't get it, I know the nods are at least gonna come your way. Thank you so much, and I'm gonna just knock wood, and um, I'm crossing my fingers, and I'm, I'm, I, I would be thrilled. Barbie. A movie about a doll. How do you adapt a doll? It's a doll, it's, it's an inanimate object that shouldn't have a story because it is there to be projected onto. Why can't I just make the eggs? Because you take too long, you make a big mess, and I have to clean the whole thing up. The working title for the movie was uh, Mothers and Daughters. Well, yours is the worst life of all, so you win. Oh, so now you're mad. Mom, the eggs are not done. Fine, make your own fucking eggs. I wanted to, you won't let me. When I was actually trying to get producers and raise money to make the film, right. I'm sorry, I'm not perfect. No one's asking you to be perfect, just consider it, would do. I don't if men had daughters, I want to go where culture is, like you. They totally got it. They were like, yep, this is my, this is my wife and my daughter. I get it. Get into those schools anyway. Mom! 
But if they didn't have either of those things... Give me a number. They had this, like... I don't understand. My name is Ladybird. Uh, well, actually, it's not. You give me a number for how much it costs to raise me, and I'm gonna get older and make a lot of money. And it's ridiculous. Call me Ladybird like Christine. you said you would. I'd write you a check for what I owe you so that I never have to speak to you again. Do women really fight like this? And then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up. Well, I highly doubt that you will be able to get a job good enough to do that. Expect everybody to do everything. <laughs> The love stories between her and her mother. For a girl, what, what are these stories? And if the main character is a girl... And not, does she date the guy? Make sure she's married by the end. This may be a more personal film for me than Lady Bird. You don't have to stay here, Joe. This is everything for me. Why should we run off and join a pirate ship? I'm not a poet. I'm just a woman. I'd read the book a lot when I was young. I'm, it was my, one of my favorite books. No, no. It's no use, Joe. And as a woman, there's no way for me to make my own money. I have hey. loved you ever since I've known you, Joe. I couldn't help it. Not enough to earn a living or to support my family. This book was the thing that really gave me any idea that I would be able to write. 5% of the royalties. What about a payment up front? It's fine, and I waited, and I never complained, because I... There are so many more stories than... You know, I figured you'd love me, Joe. Falling in love or not falling in love. And I'm so grateful to you, and I'm so proud of you, and I just... I'll give you $500 right now to buy out the copyright. There are more than just love stories for women. I don't see why I can't love you as you want me to. I don't know why. Um, that it's not girl gets boy. You keep your $500 and I'll keep the copyright. It's a girl gets book. I want to own my own book. If I had my own money, which I don't, that money would belong to my husband the moment we got married. Look at me! I'm homely and I'm awkward and I'm odd. And if we had children, they would be his, not mine. And you'd be ashamed of I me. I love you, Joe. Joe, Joe says, I want to be a boy. One like beauty. A boy. Why wouldn't she want to be a boy? So don't sit there and tell me that marriage isn't an economic proposition because it is. There was literally nothing women could do in the 19th century. Nothing. Free our sisters! Free ourselves! What evening wear? I go to car. I don't know me. You're hardly dressed. It's a new poses. It's the Mattel. Yes, Barbie changed everything. You said you were terrified to take this on. Yeah. I mean, I grew up with a mom who like was, wasn't sure about Barbie. Hey, ladies, Sasha. What's up? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> I'm only your favorite woman of all time, Barbie. All of these women are Barbie, and Barbie is all of these women controversial legacy that the doll has. Come on, Sasha. Give it to her. Destroy Barbie. You've been making women feel bad about themselves since you were invented. Because Barbie can be anything, women can be anything. You represent everything wrong with our culture. You know, representing impossible female beauty standard. Sexualized capitalism. Unrealistic physical ideals. No, no, no. Like, what a complex, terrifying thing to try to tackle. Thanks to Barbie, you set the feminist movement back 50 years. You destroy girls' innate sense of worth. All problems of feminism and equal rights have been solved. That was kind of the source of the fear, but also the source of the excitement. Then you were killing the planet with your glorification of rampant consumerism. At least, that's what the Barbies think. I'm just always interested in things that are messy and complicated and not just cleanly separated yeah. into, like, this is good and this is bad. Uh we are never angry. I'm angry nearly every day of my life. I just feel like women, they, they have minds and they have souls as well as just hearts. Like, we have to always be extraordinary. But somehow we're always doing it wrong. As women, we're taught to really keep it together and not be too much and not go too far and not be too loud or too crazy or too ambitious. I want to be great or nothing. 
And they've got ambition and they've got talent as well as just beauty. Make sure my hair is perfect. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. When you actually look at how these things unfold, I think it maybe looks like a straight line from the outside, but in, when you're in it, it feels just like a mess. I like having the space as a writer to explore characters and I'm not afraid. who didn't seem to get that memo because there's a freedom to it even when they're failing. It's too hard, it's too contradictory, and nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. I like women, I'm interested in women, but I also, I'm just interested in the, the process of change that occurs when you undertake what seems to be an impossible endeavor. Now, close your eyes. This is a the idea of a coming-of-age story is something that happens again and again and again throughout your whole life. Greta Gerwig. Greta Gerwig. And whether that's publishing a book or going to college or you're a doll who becomes human. Now feel. I didn't know movies were made by people. I thought they were handed down from God. Weekend it opened, I went around to different theaters. And I saw like lines of people and people dressed up in pink, men, women, kids, everyone dressing up in pink. It's like this incredible sense of like, you know, the song that's in my heart is in other people's heart. It's this overwhelming feeling of like, oh, it belongs to them. It doesn't belong to me, it belongs to them. Everything that she has at the end, she just wasn't able to accept any of it. She had all these things in her power, she just couldn't figure out how to do it. Oh, God. It's better going, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.